Shure just recently released their Nexodyne 8C and 8S handheld mics, and today we're gonna to talk about what makes these mics so special, which is their Evonik transducer technology, and put them through their paces so you can hear how they sound. I mean, that's really why you clicked on the video, isn't it? Oh! That's good. That was amazing. <laughs> Dual element microphones are nothing new. In fact, they've been around since the 1930s when engineers, uh, that's actual engineers, not audio engineers, mathematically theorized that a cardioid pickup pattern could be obtained by combining the outputs of an ideal, completely non-directional pressure unit with an ideal bi-directional pressure gradient unit, commonly known as the velocity unit. Anyway, to understand what makes the Nexodyne microphone special, let's look at a couple of older dual element designs. The RCA 77A is one design that used two ribbons, historically known as velocity motors, combined with a complex acoustical labyrinth that essentially made one of these velocity motors function as a pressure unit. While the Western Electric 639A incorporated an omnidirectional moving coil, what we typically call a dynamic motor, with a bidirectional ribbon, or velocity, motor. Both mics essentially used phase cancellation between the pressure and velocity motors to create a cardioid pickup pattern. While there's no doubting the ingenuity of this design or disputing the fact that both of these mics became staples in broadcasting and recording studios, the drawbacks were that these microphones were large, cumbersome, expensive, and from a practical standpoint, somewhat quirky. Because you know, physics. Enter Shore's Benjamin Bauer, an exceptionally brilliant engineer who began researching ways to achieve a directional characteristic in a microphone using a single dynamic element. He discovered that directionality could be achieved by letting sound into the rear of the capsule and delaying it with acoustic material. This became known as Shure's Uniphase Principle, and in 1939, the Unidyne Model 55 was released. The Uniphase Principle has influenced the design of virtually every directional dynamic microphone since then, and Shure's Unidyne capsules have been refined over the years, and this series is still in production today. Now you might be asking why I just gave you a history lesson on microphones from the 1930s. Well, because I'm a nerd, naturally, but also because Shure's new Revonic transducer technology is kind of rooted in the combination of these two designs. When Shure's engineers were working on the KSM-8 dual diaphragm microphone, they learned a lot about implementing two diaphragms in a handheld dynamic mic. The goal of the KSM-8 design was to control proximity effect without offsetting it by using a high frequency presence boost. This was achieved by adding a second diaphragm to the capsule, which acts as the inverse of a passive radiator in the acoustic network, and the result is a very natural sound with a wide sweet spot. In fact, the KSM-8 is one of my personal favorite handheld dynamic mics for live vocals. Now, seeing that they'd conquered the challenge of implementing a second diaphragm in the KSM-8's capsule, Shure engineers began to wonder about taking it back to those old two-motor designs and what that might look like today in a handheld dynamic mic. And after many, many, many complex calculations and equations that involve more symbols than numbers, Shure's Revonic transducer technology was born. At its core, the Revonic system utilizes two mechanically identical dynamic motors, or transducers, that are wired out of phase from each other, which brings both mechanical and acoustical benefits. But enough with the tech talk for right now. We'll get back to that in a moment, but for now, let's see how the Revonic system in these Nexodyne mics performs. Today, we're joined by vocalist Milton Van and keyboardist Damon Mack, and we're gonna do our best to replicate a live scenario with the house PA and the organ turned up and our stage monitors pumping. When the guys were sound checking, I looked at my crude decibel meter app and we're running right around 100 decibels, so we're definitely cooking up here. We're gonna start with an SM58 for a baseline, and then we're gonna move to the Cardioid Nexodyne 8C and then the Super Cardioid Nexodyne 8S. We'll check out some of each mic's complete performance and then take a listen to the isolated vocal channel to hear each mic and hear how much bleed we're getting.
as well. It is well with my soul. So that was my first time actually hearing the Nexodyne mics. Of course, I've heard a SM58, as I'm sure you have. Um, what were your impressions of, first, tell me about, like, you know, singing through the SM58, what were your impressions of that? Working with 58s for so long, there's a there's a, a second nature kick in that says, okay, turn your head if you're gonna do this, you know, or avoid, you know, P's and things of that sort and T's directly into the into the microphone. There's a blend always between vocal performance and actual being a mic tech almost. So uh, that's something that I got I kind of like always got used to. How was that different for you as a vocalist with the Nexodyne mics? I immediately noticed a difference. When we took a pass on the 58, my first phrase, I was like, okay, I gotta get a little closer if I'm gonna sing softer. And then the higher we went into the song, I had to back away. I didn't have to do any of that. I didn't have to think that way with the Nexodyne HC. I felt like the mic was working for me Okay. then. And then comparing that to the Nexodyne 8S, how did you feel singing into that mic? Now, okay, now, <laughs> I almost felt like singing, you know what I mean, with, with the 8S. I just felt, uh, I felt like the mic was definitely working for me. I didn't even have to think about handling the mic. I could focus on my vocal performance 100% and not have to worry about how I would be heard. Right, right, right. Yeah. Or whether you have, would have to compensate as much? No, I didn't, I didn't even think to compensate okay. in that way. You know what I mean? I, I, and then I, you know, in the monitors, I could feel just enough of what I needed to right. say, okay, this is what I want to do with my voice now. Right, like when we first put that mic up and you sang into it, I remember you saying to me like, oh, it feels like my voice is even closer to mm -hmm. me. Okay, and the yeah. other thing that I noticed about the 8S was that the plosives actually seemed to be even uh, less pronounced. They were still there on some of the hard consonants in the 8C, but the 8S, which I, I found really interesting, but I don't know if that was your experience. Too. I think you, as a singer, you'll always have to compensate for the whole the whole plosive factor, but I certainly didn't have to think about it as much with the 8S or the 8C, but certainly not the 8S. So why is it that we can achieve these results with the Nexodyne series? Well, as I mentioned, there are distinct mechanical and acoustical benefits to the dual transducer Revonic system. From a mechanical standpoint, Vibration noise is canceled out in the active realm through both motors being wired out of phase and interacting out of polarity. This eliminates the need for the typical pneumatic shock mount required in a single transducer design. And from an acoustical perspective, the Revonic system helps sidestep some of the trade-offs that single transducer dynamic mic designs must contend with. When designers are trying to enhance a polar pattern for more directionality, that may affect how sensitive the mic is to certain frequencies or when they try to increase the frequency response that may introduce more handling noise to the signal. With the Revonic cartridge, where the two motors are interacting together and with the cartridge space, Shore engineers discovered that they were able to really fine tune which frequencies were summed and which were subtracted in a way that impacted the polar pattern shape, making both the cardioid and the supercardioid polar patterns more stable across the frequency response range, both in pickup and rejection. Practically speaking, this translates to a tighter, more consistent polar pattern that delivers what more of you, your front of house engineer, and your monitor engineer want, which is your voice, while minimizing bleed. The vibration noise cancellation results in more low end clarity, and this overall cleaner signal makes dealing with both stage and in-ear monitors easier, allowing for more accurate and comfortable monitor mixes. The more even frequency response also means that less signal processing is going to be necessary, allowing for a more accurate reproduction of your voice and better intelligibility for your audience. Today, we checked out the wired XLR Nexodyne 8C and 8S mics, but these are also available as just the screw-on wireless capsule and soon will be available as handheld transmitters in Axiant, ULXD, QLXD, and SLXD variants. But what do you think about these Nexodyne mics and Shure's Revonic transducer technology? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, this has been Andrew from B&H.